Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Plastic pollution might be the most reported on and least acted on environmental issue on the planet. Every year we dump 12 million tons into the oceans, which is accumulated to 10 billion tons of plastic waste. David Katz grew up in Victoria, Canada, and always loved the coast and bemoaned pollution of the coast. He's also an entrepreneur and the founder of a rather amazing social environmental initiative called Plastic Bank. Well, Plastic Bank is the world's largest chain of stores for the ultra poor for those who make less than a dollar a day, where everything in the store is available to be purchased using what was considered plastic garbage. So garbage that would otherwise flow into the environment or the ocean used to pay for school tuition and medical insurance and medical care. David Katz and Plastic Bank take the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals very seriously. Those 17 goals are in order from 1 to 17. If we get to 14, which is life below water, we can't effectively do that unless we end poverty. Poverty is the root of gender inequality, hunger, malnutrition. All of those things come as a result of poverty. We need to solve that. And we know that by unleashing the economic opportunity within the 10 trillion kilos of plastic that are already on the earth, it may be an origin to change. So Plastic Bank set out to help with the plastics problem and address poverty head on. They work with 23,000 of the world's poorest people by paying them to collect plastic waste. We operate currently in Haiti, Philippines, Indonesia, Brazil, Egypt, This year, we're going into Thailand, Cameroon. With a new relationship with S.E. Johnson, we'll be going to Tanzania and Kenya. So, how does it work? Elise is a story we talk about in Haiti. She's a a wonderful woman, one of of the first collectors in in my history with us. And she survived the 2010 deadly earthquake in Haiti, left a widow, and you know, her, her experience at the plastic bank has really left her with opportunity. You know, she takes her girls to school in the morning. She'll drop them off and then she'll go out collecting during the day. She might have a route. Uh, she's got a variety of ways. She goes out, collects volumes of material. And before she picks the girls up, she comes to the plastic bank location where the material is viewed to make sure that there's no impurity or loss of value. Plastic Bank has set up 558 locations around the world and uses a proprietary blockchain banking system that takes plastic as an input and the credits can be spent on things people need, such as school tuition, supplies, or medical care. So garbage that would otherwise flow into the environment or the ocean used to pay for school tuition and medical insurance and medical care and Wi-Fi and cell phone minutes and cooking fuel and clean water and everything the poor need but struggle to afford using garbage as money. Now inside of that, there's a blockchain-based banking application. We've created a monetary exchange, a system, using resource materials as the input. The plastic bank locations are also social enterprises who add value by cleaning and pelletizing the plastic and selling it to companies. So that one of our customers like S.E. Johnson, who takes our material from, from the Philippines, puts it into Windex bottles. So if you go to a store and buy a Windex bottle anywhere in the world and you take it off the shelf, you would be in fact participating in removing material from ocean-bound sources and helping end a little bit of suffering in someone simultaneously. We powerfully put purpose into the brands we work with while helping end poverty, while keeping plastic out of the ocean. There's lots going on. David Katz calls it social plastic. Last year, Plastic Bank recycled 17.5 million kilograms of plastic and helped 26,733 people. There's much more to this story. Learn more in our blog at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.